Hello, and uh, here I'm just doing a couple of examples of proving something uh, using trig identities. Um, and essentially all it is is they'll, they'll give you something is equivalent to something, and you want to start with this side and transform it into the right. That's usually what the name of the game is. If it's ridiculously difficult one way, it's usually that that's the right way to do it. It's more sensible and logical. Sometimes it might be that you can spot the trick and doing it backwards which is okay, but please don't start with this as an equation and then try and move and rearrange and cancel and, you know, if you ended up as 0 equals 0, then I, I guess you've proved that they were equal, but that's not really uh, the point. It's not to see this as an equation to muck about with. Um, you'll get sort of stuck in a lot of algebra uh, if, and rearranging if you try that. So just try and ignore that other than for the clues that you might get uh, from from what the answer is supposed to look at look like. Um, now we've got a lot of trig identities we can use. We've got the basic ones, so sine theta over cos theta is tan theta, uh, and the sine squared uh, theta plus cos squared theta equals 1. Uh, we've also got the rearrangements of these for sec and um, for cosec, although I don't think we'll need that. There's none of that over here. Uh, we've also got the addition formulae, and that looks like that's plausible here. And we've got the double angles. So there's something going on here between the addition and the double angles, potentially. Um, and, and you may indeed know other ones, but, but those are the ones I suspect uh, will come into this. So it's about just mostly it's about having experience having sort of done enough that you can look at it and think well this looks like the most promising line of attack but you've got to try something and if it doesn't work try something else and uh, have the confidence to think no nah, I'm I'm getting a bit of a muddle here obviously check for mistakes because it might be you've muddled yourself just by making a mistake but you're on the right lines um, and the more you do the better you'll get so anyway less rambling and um, and I'll see if we can if we can cope with this. Now I'm already quite concerned because I've got sine squared, um, and I've got double angles, so I'm already a bit worried. But I've just thought this is sine squared, so I was thinking, you know, can I s split that with um, one of the double angle rules? You can kind of turn that into a cos of two, but. I'm not convinced. I've, I've spotted something else just before I was about to suggest that, that this is a square number minus a square number. This is the difference of two squares. So it might be that I can simplify them together uh, into one aspect and simplify the others into another aspect. So let's give that a go. And if it doesn't work, then we'll come back and try the double angle rearrangement with cos. So this is going to be sine of x plus y uh, plus sine of x minus y times sine of x plus y, running out of space, minus sine of x minus y. And I might be wrong, but the, the thought process goes that uh, if we have um, two things here, that this thing is going to cancel delightfully into sine 2x, and this thing's going to cancel delightfully into sine of 2y. But anyway, let's let's find out. Uh, so what do we get if we have this as a double angle, uh, not an, angle, an addition uh, identity? So what would we get? We'd get sine of the first, cos of the second, plus cos of the first, sine of the second. And then we've got a plus, and we've got the same thing again. Uh, sine of the first, cos of the second, minus this time, because it's minus there, sine of the, sorry, cos of the first, and sine of the second. Okay, now surely something's going to cancel with this minus, so cos x sine y, cos x sine y, yes, bam, bam, get rid of those, and what we've ended up with here is two lots of sine x cos y. Right, okay, well, how can we deal with this? Because we need to turn this into uh, a, these doubles. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave that for the moment. Uh, that's this first bracket, so let's, let's have that bracket there. Let's deal with the second bracket. It's going to be very similar to what we had here, so we can, we can leave this, just get rid of the crossings out, 
and this time sine xy, that's the same, and this time it's minus this. So this is going to be minus, and this is going to be plus. It's just changing that sign. And this time it's the sine x cos y, sine x cos y that cancels, and we end up with two of these. So two cos x sine y. Right, okay, does that help us? Maybe. Um, now these are times together, and everything's times together now, so uh, I'll just ignore this question, move down the page a bit. So 2 times 2 is 4, and we've got sine x sine y. Oh, no, let's leave it as a 2, okay? Um, so we've got 2 times this times this times this times this times this. I can change the order because multiplication is commutative. So 2 times sine x cos x um, times 2 sine y cos y. Now, if I remember correctly, and I might make a mistake, but I'm pretty sure that if you have the double angle rule, uh, sine of 2 theta, what you get is, well, let's work it out from the addition. It would be sine of the first uh, cos of the second uh, plus cos of the sec uh, cos of the first sine of the second, and of course they're the same, so you end up with two sine cos of the same thing, okay? And that's exactly what we got, two sine x cos x, so that's going to become, uh, not two, sorry, the two is built in there, so it's going to become sine of two x, and this is exactly the same thing, uh, and it's going to be sine of two y, which is exactly what we want, sine two x, sine two y, we did it. Wasn't too bad in the end. I'm pleased I noticed that difference of two squares, because uh, I think if I'd have tried to do it with the uh, turning it into cos of two something, I'd have uh, got bogged down uh, quite quickly. So, so that was good that I spotted that. Now you might, uh, you know, I'm not saying that's a straightforward thing to spot. You're probably looking at this and you're going straight in for the trig, but you've got to keep all of the ideas that you know from from GCSC and indeed earlier, any tricks of the trade, you've got to spot things, try things, and see what works. Right, to get rid of all that, and let's have a go at the second one. Prove that 4 cos of this is equivalent to this giant thing. Okay, well again, let's ignore that for now, and then we can use it to aim at when we process this. This is an addition rule, but we've also got a double angle, so I don't know if that will come into it. Let's just try expanding this addition. So we've got a 4, and then we've got the expansion of the, the double angle. So this one is cos of the first, cos of the second, um, yeah. And then it would normally be a minus, but because we've got a minus, it's going to be plus, and we need the 4 again from the front, sine of the first... Um, sine of the second. And of course, we can work out what cos pi over 6 is. I always have to draw it to remind myself. So if that's pi, then pi over 6 is the same as 30 degrees, because pi over 3 would be 60, and 360s make 180. Yes. So cos of 30, I believe, is root 3 over 2. 4 over 2 is 2. So 2 root 3 cos of 2 theta plus and sine of uh, 30, or pi over 6, should be a half, so that's going to be 2 sine 2 theta. Now this is looking relatively good. I've got 2 root 3, which is here, 2 root 3. Um, I've got a 2 rather than a 4, but you know, but look, these aren't doubles, these are singles, so there's going to be a double angle rule coming into this as well, and uh, so we need to have a think what these are. Now there's three ways of doing this one, so hmm, I'm not sure. Let's let's do this one and see what we get, and then we can work out what we need this one to be to fill in the gaps. So 2 sine 2 theta. Sine 2 theta is 2 lots of sine theta cos theta. So that's nice and straightforward. In fact, that gives us this straight away, doesn't it? Because we've got the 2 in front, so that's just going to give us 4 sine theta cos theta. Lovely. So this thing has got to give us all of this. I say all of this, two terms. It's got to give us uh, just the, the two root three on its own without anything, and it's got to give us this. Well, we can do that. If we want the sine squared one, then we remember that cos two theta equals... Now, I never remember what they are, so I always have to work it out. So excuse me, uh, working it out as I go along. Um, this is going to be 
Um, so as a double angle, uh, sorry, as an addition angle, it's cos of the first, cos of the second, so that's cos squared, minus sine squared theta. That's right, because it's similar to the sort of identity. One, If we add them, we get 1, but this is subtracting them, we get cos 2 theta. We want just the sine squared, so we need to get rid of this. And I know that cos squared theta is 1 minus sine squared theta from uh, the classic um, identity that everyone learns first, that sine squared plus cos squared equals 1. So if we write, rewrite this, we're going to get uh, 1 minus sine squared minus sine squared, so 1 minus 2 sine squared. This is looking very good now. It's looking exactly what we want. So if we replace this in here, we've got 2 root 3, and then times this, this is going to give us exactly what we want. So 2 root 3 times 1 minus 2 times 2 root 3 is 4 root 3, and sine squared theta and then the thing we had here, plus 4 sine theta cos theta, which is exactly what they wanted, and we can stop there. Now, obviously, your examples are going to be completely different. They might use the same identities. They might use different identities. Um, the point isn't that now you know exactly how to do every question. Definitely not. Hopefully, you can see, though, how I come uh, to the question. I look at it, and I say, well what what is there you know is it um so originally i was looking at that as sine squared and thinking well i could use this identity and turn them into cos 2 theta uh, so you've got to think oh that's a possibility um but then i noticed the difference two squares and thought oh maybe that gives me these two different things which it didn't exactly in the way i thought but it followed through and cancelled nicely and etc etc and this one i thought well it's an addition formula first but then there might be a double angle in there as well so it's about looking for little clues in the in the questions that might give the game away and and then just trying it and if you get stuck then um then either you've made a numerical mistake or a sign mistake that you need to go back and look through and fix or you you go in the wrong way and you need to come back and and try and spot something else as a starting point. I'll leave it there. If you have any questions about what I've done there, you can pop them in the comments, but otherwise, cheerio.